What do you need to know about your love life in the next three to six months? Oh, wow. <laughs> Okay. Hi there, beautiful soul. This is Dahlia with Spiritual Society here to bring you your general pick a card reading and also a love spell for attracting love. So if you are currently looking for a relationship, you've been single for a while, you need some self-love inspiration and you want to be loved unconditionally by a partner who is truly for you, then this reading is for you today and this love spell as well. Yes. So thank you so much for joining me. Right now, I'm just cleansing all the ingredients in the surrounding area with incense so that everything is purified and enhanced with the energy that we want to call in and desire in our lives. So first things first, what is a love spell? Each one of these ingredients has a specific frequency and quality that matches what you want to bring into your life. So simply, it's just a matter of your focus and using this ritual as an opportunity to focus in with eagle-like clarity on what it is that you desire. And this is just an experience that you can call in and cultivate that energy as well. So I just wanted to preface by saying that we're not forcing anything to happen. We're not making anything happen with this spell. We are using this spell as an opportunity to focus our, our clarity on what we want to call in in our lives. And in this case, it's most importantly, self-love, unconditional love for self, a sense of inner worthiness, a sense of inner desire. And when you have that focus of yourself, you know who you are, you know what you're worth, you know what you desire, then you can radiate that energy out into the world, out into the universe. And the universe is just going to mirror your inner state of belief. The universe will always reflect what you believe about yourself. So again, this is an opportunity for you to focus your mind, focus your heart on a sense of inner worthiness, a sense of overwhelming desire and passion and love for yourself first and foremost, then you won't be able to help but radiate that energy out into the world as well. So that being said, let's go ahead and begin. So I've already cleared and cleansed all that I'm going to use today with the incense. So from here, what we're going to do is begin our manifestation ritual. So as I go, I'm going to explain what each and every one of these ingredients will do to help call in the love that you desire. So I'm going to go ahead and put this wax here so that it will melt by the time I'm done with the ritual. If you have a candle, you can go ahead and melt that down and pour it over the finished product to seal it with your intention. So let's begin. So the first item I'm going to use is bay leaf. So bay leaf is also called the wishing leaf, and you will probably see it very often used in manifestation rituals where you can write down what you want to call in into your life and you can burn it you can add it to your spell jar whatever you desire so right now I'm going to use a marker to write down what I want to manifest and you can use any words or phrases that represent your intention the best so what I'm going to write down is I am loved unconditionally so I'm going to add passionately. So I wrote down, I am loved passionately and unconditionally. So I love using I am because I am is the name of power. Anything you put after I am represents what you believe about yourself. I am loved. I am harmonious. I am happy. Or alternatively, if you say I am unlovable, I am unworthy, anything you put after I am represents what you believe about yourself. And also you want to call in your manifestation in the present tense. Because again, the universe represents your intention and your belief now, not in the future. It's all about right now. So you don't want to say, I will be loved because that represents the future and that will continually push your desire into the future, which will never be experienced because everything you experience, you experience in the now. So you want to use the present tense language and you want to use the I am affirmation to call in what you desire 
there in your life. So this can represent self-love. First and foremost, I love myself passionately and unconditionally. And when you experience that self-love, that radiates outwards and to a partner who will also love you passionately and unconditionally. So I'm going to go ahead and put the bay leaf in the spell jar to begin. All right, so next I'm gonna use cinnamon. So cinnamon is perfect to enhance our abundance and our success when it comes to our love life, okay? So cinnamon stick enhances abundance and success. Call in the love that you desire. So next I'm going to use quartz crystal because quartz crystal also enhances your intention. So what I wanna do right now is program this quartz crystal with our affirmation. So I'm gonna hold this quartz crystal in my hand and I'm going to repeat the affirmation that we wrote down on the bay leaf. I am loved passionately and unconditionally. I am loved passionately and unconditionally. I am loved passionately and unconditionally. So it is. Next, I'm going to use peppercorn. Peppercorn is a spice that will enhance desire and passion. So we're going to go ahead and add peppercorn. So each one of these ingredients that I'm using today are fairly common. So you can find them in your local supermarket. Many of them you may already have in your kitchen, okay? So just keep that in mind that you can use whatever you have available to you, whatever is easiest for you to find. So I'm gonna add some more peppercorn to enhance desire and passion within yourself. Again, remember that's gonna radiate outwards. Whatever you want to manifest, it starts within and it radiates outward. So we're going to enhance our love and our desire and our passion for ourselves, and allow it to radiate out into the world. Beautiful. So next I'm going to use catnip. So catnip is actually going to make you irresistible and it's going to allow you to attract and call in the lover you desire. Okay. So again, catnip is going to make you irresistible. All right. Beautiful. So we have our catnip added to the jar. Next thing I want to use is raspberry leaf. So raspberry leaf is associated with Venus and Venus is the planet of love and passion, sensual desire to actually draw in a lover who is completely honest, upworthy and faithful. OK, so we don't want just any love. We want a lover who's going to honor, respect and stay faithful to us. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and add some of this raspberry leaf in there. Again, to call in a, an honest, upright, and faithful lover. Beautiful. So next I have some dried orange peels. So we want to infuse our self-love with joy, joy and success. All right. It's your joy that's going to radiate outwards and allow you to call in the love that you really desire. OK, so love, success, fertility, joy with these dried orange peels. All right. So next I have hibiscus. Hibiscus leaves are perfect as an aphrodisiac. So that means this is going to make you irresistible. It's going to enhance physical desire and passion. Again, within yourself first and foremost, and radiate that physical desire, that lust, that passion into your life as well. Okay. So you want yourself first, you love yourself first, and then that is going to go out into the world. Okay. And the universe will say, yes, she is irresistible. So now I have rose petals and this will enhance your physical and mental and emotional beauty and desire and allow you to attract and call in that new love that is perfect for you. Okay. A little bit more rose petals in there. Amazing. Beautiful. I love doing this ritual. It's just so peaceful. It's such an amazing experience. 
to focus your intention on what you want to call into your life and magnify that and spend some time loving on yourself. And I'm just so grateful for it. So I'm happy to be able to do this with you today to enhance your self-love and to call in the soulmate, call in the partner that matches that energy and experience joy and harmony, bliss, passion, abundance, and desire. So lastly, I'm going to add a dried orange slice right on top to finish off the spell. I'm going to cork off the jar, okay? So remember, as you seal this, you want to seal it with your focus and your intention. You want to thank life, thank the universe, thank your higher self for seeing and knowing all, for knowing exactly who is right for you and bringing them into your life at the exact right time and making sure that you have all the qualities where you're preparing yourself for your lover. That means you love yourself unconditionally. You have so much passion and security for yourself and your inner beauty and you are not going to be able to help but magnetize and call in someone who finds you irresistible because they see all those lovely qualities that you have cultivated, that you've planted and you have reaped within yourself. All right, so with that intention, we seal off our jar and it looks like a wax is about melted. So I'm gonna pour that over. So remember, if you have a candle like here, you can pour the wax over. This is melting wax for stamps if you stamp letters. So again, use whatever you have available to you. But now I'm going to pour this over. And as the wax seals the jar, again, we're gonna seal it with intention, faith, and we're not gonna have impatience. We know that the universe is gonna bring us our right desire at the exact right time. So we have that faith, we have that patience and that expectancy that the law of attraction is responding to our desire and this will manifest at the exact right time. And we say thank you, and so it is. And I go ahead and pour that over, seal off our jar. Lovely, beautiful, what do you think? Is this something that you will do to call in the love that you desire within and without? Such a magical, harmonious experience and ritual. Now what you can do is place this on your altar. If you don't have an altar, it is a sacred space within your home, on a dresser, a separate table, a nightstand, whatever sacred space you wanna call in and create in your environment that reminds you of your divine light, calls in all the best qualities in your home, in your environment, and within yourself. Go ahead and place that on your altar so that every time you see it, it will remind you of your focus, your faith, your intention, and the patience that you are calling in the exact right love that you desire and you deserve. So thank you so much for joining me for this ritual. Now I'm going to begin your love reading to determine what it is you need to know about calling in and manifesting a partner into your life. Now that we have our spell jar complete for manifesting and calling in self-love and a true soul partnership, we're going to do a reading to clarify your love life to clarify what part of you needs more love what will your partner love about you is there anything that is blocking you from calling in and attracting your right person when can you expect to meet them all this and more i will go over in your reading so now go ahead and select the card or crystal that you're drawn to the most whether one two three or four, and you can select it from the timestamp below. Let's get started. 
Hi there, card number one. Thank you so much for joining me for your spell jar and love reading to call in self-love and to attract and manifest your right soulmate love partner. So the first card that you are drawn to in the beginning is the Black Madonna, Our Lady of the Hermits. It says, I transform pain and suffering into a greater capacity to love. So that is a great affirmation to begin your reading. I transform pain and suffering into a greater capacity to love. All right. So the first card I'm going to select for you is what part of you needs some love right now? What part of you needs some love? What part of you needs some love? Also, I want to clarify the stone that you were drawn to is the opal. And also, if you're wondering what this is, if you missed the beginning of our spell jar ritual to call in and attract self-love and to magnetize and manifest a soulmate love partner, go back to the beginning and you'll see how I put this spell jar together and how you can create one for yourself as well. So let's continue. What part of you needs some love right now? The hanged man. Hmm. The hanged man is about your focus and shifting upside down into having a new perspective so you can see your situation from a completely different point of view and actually glean some wisdom and insight from the experience and to see how something that you might not like might be serving you what you can learn from it how can you grow from it so what part of you needs some love i think it's your perspective on how the pain and the suffering that you've been through in the past and might be still feeling is actually transforming into a greater capacity to love so what part of you needs some love I think it's just your perspective and to see how all the negative things that you've gone through are actually transforming you, are actually providing the fuel for you to grow. If you've never heard of alchemy, alchemy is like an ancient tradition of turning metal into gold. It's like a chemical process of turning a lower metal into a higher metal. So something, you know, like a, a, a metal that's not as valuable into gold. But the spiritual idea behind alchemy is actually transforming something negative into something positive. It's the idea of seeing the silver lining that there's always something beneficial for you in the worst of experiences. So that is spiritual alchemy. It's transforming pain and suffering into a greater capacity to love, a greater ability to be wise and resilient and discerning. And when you can do that, it actually generates a great amount of patience and acceptance within you. Acceptance is the key to peace to a life on earth that is harmonious because acceptance doesn't necessarily mean that you like what's happening or that you approve of what's happening. It just simply means I am here. I see that this is happening. There may be nothing I can do about it at this moment, but I accept it and I allow it. And what that does is it brings peace within the cells of your body. And when you can slow down and separate yourself and detach from the circumstance that you're going through, it allows you to have, again, a greater patience and a greater resiliency to move through that experience in a harmonious way. And at the end of it, say, you know what? I'm grateful that I went through that. No matter how hard it was, no matter how painful it was, if I didn't grow, if I didn't go through that and grow through that, I wouldn't be the person I am today. So that is what parts of what part of you needs more love is your ability to transform your pain and suffering into a greater wisdom, a greater love within yourself. OK, so that's where we're going to begin now. Just a shift in perspective is all you need at this time. 
Okay, so the next question I'm going to ask for you is how can I appreciate this part of me more? How can you appreciate this aspect of life that you're going through more? How can you appreciate your perspective and your point of view more? How can you appreciate your situation more? The three of pentacles. Very interesting. So the three of pentacles is about working together to reach a common goal. And I just had this thought that by you being here, this is you working on your perspective. By you being here and watching this video and looking for insight, you are actually looking for motivation and guidance to help you shift your perspective. So how can you appreciate this part of you more? By being grateful for you being able and willing to seek out a new perspective, to seek out some clarity and insight that you may not have been able to achieve on your own. And we can never achieve anything really on our own. Like just think about all the books and all the minds that have gathered together to share the wisdom and the insight that they've gained over the course of their life. And so we never really reach anywhere in life alone. We always have teachers, we always have guides, we always have a circle or a community or just even one person that we can share our thoughts with or that we can glean some information and some wisdom based on their experience so that we can have a new perspective. So how you can appreciate, I would just say congratulations for seeking out clarity. Congratulations for being willing and open to say that I want a new perspective. This isn't working for me. I know that I don't have to feel this way. I know that I don't have to feel this amount of suffering for something that was out of my control. I know there's something beautiful and positive in store for me. So congratulations, first of all, for seeking that wisdom. And I think that's what you can appreciate about your perspective at this time is that you're working to shift it because you know there's something greater for you in store. So that is beautiful. Okay, so the next question I'm going to ask for you is what will your future partner love about you? What will that partner that is perfect for you admire most about your qualities? What will your partner admire and love most about your qualities? The Ace of Pentacles. They will admire your manifestation abilities, your ability to set an intention and call in all of the ingredients and all just like the spell jar that we did today your ability to call in the qualities of what you want to experience in your life and to set an intention and to magnetize it and manifest it effortlessly with ease and with grace so that is what your partner is going to love the most about you is your earthy qualities your sensual qualities your focus on what you want to experience and what you desire in your life and your ability to alchemize and to transform and to create like compost compost that becomes fertilizer and new soil for a new beginning so that's what your partner will admire most about you, your ability to create a new beginning from everything you've gone through, your ability to manifest, to set goals, to have intentions, to focus and have faith, and to see synchronicities and signs of what it is that you're calling into your life and to allow it to manifest with ease and grace. So that is what they will admire about you. That is very beautiful, okay? All right, so I'm going to switch over to my Love Oracle deck to answer the next question. Is there anything blocking your partner from coming into your life at this time? Is there anything blocking your partner from coming into your life now? We have Girl with the Snake 
empath and narcissist paradigm being charmed or used enable boundaries okay so this card suggests that you may have a tendency to allow yourself to be used by others maybe in the attempt to want love like maybe for instance you you want love so badly and so you're willing to put up with you know red flags you know there might be enough red flags for you to walk away but then you're like but i love them or there's something there's something there that i i just know that if it comes out they'll be able to love me unconditionally so this suggests that it's possible in the past that you've gone after people who were more selfish or self-absorbed and maybe in the beginning it kind of seemed like they really cared about you it seemed like they wanted to quote unquote give you the world and love you passionately and unconditionally but after a while maybe it started to seem like this person is actually pretty selfish they don't really respond to my needs or really put my needs first sometimes see they're always looking for me to take care of their needs and when i don't they make me feel guilty if you've ever gone through that or you find yourself having something of a pattern when it comes to those types of people then this suggests that that might be a block in your energy field. And let me just say that if at any point you don't resonate with my message, you can always go to the timestamp to choose another card that may call to you and that may more accurately reflect your situation. So just, just know that if at any point you don't resonate, you can choose another card and see if that better reflects you. But if that does resonate with you and you do feel like you've gone through this pattern of dealing with narcissistic or very self-absorbed people who at some point show you that they really don't care about your needs, then again, that could be a block. And the way to move through that is to enable boundaries. You have to know, first of all, what you want, because when you know what you want, you'll see when it's not there. And also you have to know what you're worth. You have to be willing to only accept the best for yourself. And when you enable those boundaries of knowing your worth and knowing what you want in a partner, then that immediately sets up a boundary that can't be crossed unless you put that boundary down, okay? So again, that could be a block if you resonate with what I'm saying that, you know, it's it's time for you to enable these boundaries so that you don't put up with people using you or abusing you, okay? So the next question I'm going to ask for you is what can you do to overcome this block? I'm going to use another oracle card. What can you do to overcome this block? Okay, this says my most important relationship is with my source. So let's just simmer in that for a moment. My most important relationship is with my source, my higher self, God, the universe, whatever you envision the source of creation to be. Your most important relationship is with the source. So just simmer in that for a moment. What does that mean to you? What does that feel like? That before your relationship with another person, before even your relationship with yourself, your personality, your relationship with your higher self, the one who watches over you and sees all and knows all is conducting things on your behalf, your relationship with that is most important. So let's read the card and see what it says. There is no relationship of greater importance to achieve than the relationship between you in your physical body right here and now and the soul source God from which you have come. Let me repeat that. There is no relationship of greater importance to achieve than, re than the relationship between you in your physical body right here and now and the soul and source and God from which you have come, between you and soul, source, God. If you tend to that relationship between you and source, first and foremost, you will then and only then 
have the stable footing to proceed into other relationships. Your relationship with your own body, with money, with your parents, children, grandchildren, and your world will all fall easily into alignment once you tend to this fundamental relationship first. So that is beautiful. So what can you do to overcome this block? Is tend to your relationship between you and your soul, your higher self, God, the universe, the higher power that sees and knows all and creates life and continues to expand and is love. Love is what that source is ultimately. So when you tend to that relationship of you with the highest love, then the relationships you have on the external become easier, become more graceful. Okay, so that's going to help you overcome this block of letting yourself be used or charmed or manipulated by other people for the sake of their love because you have the highest love. And when you remember that, you plant that seed deep within you so that it can't be uprooted, then your relationships on the external will be forced to mirror the knowledge that you have the eternal love with you and nothing, no one can take that away from you. So that will help you with this block, okay? Beautiful. I'm so grateful to be able to do this reading for you. Okay, so the next question I'm going to ask for you is, what is in store for my love life in the near future? I'm going to go back to the tarot deck for this. What is in store for my love life in the near future? So what do you need to know about your love life in the near future? What do you need to know about your love life in the near future? And by near future, let's clarify three to six months. What do you need to know about your love life in the next three to six months? Oh, wow. <laughs> Ooh, wee. Okay. Um, <laughs> I couldn't have gotten a better reading for you. Ooh, this is beautiful. Okay. So the lovers means that a particular person that is worthy of being your life partner, your soulmate, please excuse my bird. My bird in the background is very excited for you. I have two parakeets. So please excuse the noise. But yes, the lovers. The lovers is the balance of masculine and feminine, the balance of duality, the darkness and the light, the ability to transform fear and pain and suffering into unconditional love and grace, okay? Soulmate union, all right? Two people who are committed to deciding to dedicate their all to one another. This is the lover's card. I'm so overjoyed, like filled with energy about this outcome for you. So yes, the lovers, the soulmates, the decision, the commitment combined with the nine of cups and the nine of pentacles. Like this is unbelievable energy. So the nine of cups, the nine of pentacles, Nine of Cups is, first of all, these are, the nine is about completion. It's a number of reaching the end. So you are soon approaching the end goal of reaching this committed union that you really desire within you. The perfect person, not a narcissist, not somebody who's going to use you, a, a person who admires these qualities about you, who mirrors the best in you, like this relationship with your source, the unconditional love that you know that you are and then that you know that you have. So the Nine of Cups is, again, it's about reaching the bliss and the fulfillment of accomplishing what you've been pouring your energy into. And it's the same with the Nine of Pentacles. This is about reaching the harvest, harvesting what you've been focusing on. Again, reaching the end of this Ace of Pentacles, which is about feeling bliss, feeling fulfilled. Everything we want, we hope that it will make us feel fulfilled. And that's what this card represents is accomplishing what you want and feeling fulfilled. And the Nine of Cups is the same energy. This is emotionally and physically. So you will emotionally and physically feel bliss and abundance and fulfillment based on reaching this lovers, this union, this soulmate heart 
connection, dedicated, committed, because relationships aren't just about that initial passion and spark. They're about the commitment to dedicate your love, your focus, your energy, your intention, your and willing to grow together. Your That commitment between one person that two people dedicate to one another, okay? That's what this card represents is very serious energy in relationship to deciding to dedicate your all to another person. So, I mean, this is amazing. This, <laughs> this is really amazing. Okay, I'm going to put the lover's card on top. That is so beautiful. Okay, so finally, I'm going to suggest when you can expect this soulmate love union to come into your life. I did ask between three and six months what's an outcome. So let's focus on that time period. Let's see what the divine timing oracle brings up about when you can expect generally this to come into your life. And remember, this is all conditioned upon you focusing on this energy of changing your perspective of pain into suffering, enabling boundaries, focusing on your relationship with source. Under those conditions, then you can manifest and call in the mirror of that energy. So I just want to be clear about that, okay? You have your own fate in your own hands by what you focus your energy upon, what you believe about yourself, okay? So when can you expect this person to come into your life? When can you expect this person to come into your life? A few weeks. Okay, beautiful. So this card suggests that within a few weeks, someone is going to come into your life that is going to be a potential soulmate union. Okay, so keep that in mind. And it did say this outcome within three to six months. So the meeting could be within a few weeks. You could already know them. And also within three to six months, it could manifest into a real soulmate partnership. So thank you so much for joining me. This has been a very passionate and inspiring reading. I hope that it serves you and gives you clarity, inspiration, faith that you know what it is that you desire is coming into your life. I hope you enjoyed the love spell, spell jar ritual. And let me know in the comments below if you're going to do this for yourself, if you're going to call in this manifestation of your heart's desire with the spell jar. And also, if you want to claim this message for yourself, go ahead and comment a partner emoji. There's an emoji with two people together in a union. So go ahead and comment a partnership emoji down below to represent your soulmate coming into your life. Again, I'm so grateful to be able to do this reading for you, and I hope that it inspired you. Just to let you know, we do have a new subscription offering, the Spiritual Inner Circle, where you can become a VIP member, and you get access to not only these readings on a weekly basis more frequently, but you also get access to the spell jar rituals that we'll be doing. Also, you'll be able to listen in to live Zoom calls between myself and Psychic Mia. So I hope that you will join us there and we can have more fun and inspiration together. So until the next time I get to read for you, I'm sending you so much peace and love. Bye for now. Hi there, card number two. This is Dahlia. Thank you so much for joining me for your love predictions reading this week. To find out what you need to know about your love life, to manifest and call in soulmate love, and most importantly, self-love. So the card that you were drawn to in the beginning is Thecla, the prophetess of true power. This card says, I call my power back from all times and all places. 
I am my own. So this card is about calling back, reclaiming your power from any place it's ever gone, knowing that you are your own. The stone that you were drawn to is the amethyst. And this is the spell jar we created for manifesting self-love and a reflection of a true soulmate partnership. So if you missed the spell jar ritual and you want to learn more about creating your own, go ahead and go back to the very beginning and look at that video as well okay so let's begin so the first question i'm asking for you is what part of you needs some love right now what part of you might be lacking love and needs it what part of you might be lacking love and needs it What part of you needs love? Let's see what this one is. The chariot. Okay, so this actually makes a lot of sense. The chariot is about using your willpower and your determination to move opposing forces forward. So if you feel like you're stuck, like you know, your energy might be depleted, that you don't have the willpower to move forward and to accomplish your goal, which in this case might be loving yourself, might be feeling like you have the ability to have love for another and to receive love from another. So this suggests that that might be a part of you that needs love, is your ability to call your own power back. You know, there's such a thing as a cord cutting ritual that you can do. You can also look into that if this resonates with you, where you feel like you were in a partnership or maybe several relationships over the course of your life, and you feel like a part of your energy is still stuck with them. And that can take the shape of not being able to get over them, continuously dreaming about them or having memories about them and feeling really still connected to a relationship once it's been long over. So this is about reclaiming and calling back your energy, your power, so that you can focus all of your energy on the present moment and move forward to that de destination and that goal that you truly desire which in this case may be a soulmate partnership, a relationship with a true-hearted, dedicated lover who's willing to put in the energy and the focus and the commitment on you, okay? So if that resonates with you, that's your goal, is to find that committed, resonant soulmate union and you might feel that a part of you is stuck in the past with another person and you you know, hard, find it hard to get over that person and may want that person back, but also may know that it's not gonna work out, it's not for you, and you wanna move forward, then this reading is for you. And if at any point you don't resonate with the information that I'm sharing, you can always go back and choose another card or crystal and see if that reading more accurately reflects your energy, okay? So let's move forward again, just to reiterate, a part of you that needs love is maybe reclaiming your power and your determination to move on from the past so that you can move towards your destination and accomplish the goal of being in a true soulmate union. All right, so how can you appreciate this part of you more? How can you reclaim your power? How can you reclaim your power with the energy and willpower to move forward? So we have the Nine of Wands and the Ace of Wands. So yes, it's time for you to move beyond certain boundaries that you have it may be afraid you may be afraid to love again is the thought that just came through you might be fearful that love is not for you because you it's possible that you continue to be hurt or at least have been hurt in the past and that's why you feel like maybe you don't have your power like it's stuck in the past so this is also about willpower and determination to move that last mile. Like if you're running a marathon and you're running out of steam and you feel like, oh, I can't make it, but I'm so close to the end, 
That's the, what this card is about, needing to summon up the energy and the determination to reach that finish line, okay? So this is how you can overcome this part of you is summoning the energy to move beyond any boundaries that you have that may be preventing you from reaching your goal. And how you do that is with the Ace of Wands. This is about being re-inspired. This is about having new energy and new passion. So how can you get that willpower and that determination to call back your power and to move forward is to find something to renew your passion. And I just remembered the spell jar that we just created together. Find new shifts of perspective, activities, hobbies, anything that you can do to shift your focus to the present moment and to create fire and passion and energy in your life so that you can move forward. It's easy to get stuck in the comfort zone. It's easy to get fall back into victimization mode when you don't see things changing. But it's also impossible to see things changing if you don't set your intentions on moving forward and if you, t if you don't take action on moving forward. So this is about having a renewed passion Find that thing that you want to accomplish. What is your goal? What is your destination? If it's finding the soulmate union, then it's time to cut all ties with that person in the past that harmed you and hurt you and made you feel unworthy or whatever it is the case for you. It's time to cut all ties with that past hurt and decide that this is what you want and to call in and set the intentions, write down if you want to, all the qualities that you desire and you deserve in a true soulmate union and to move forward with your passion, with your intention, your focus and your action to move forward and to call in and manifest what it is that you desire. All right, so the next question I'm going to ask about is what will your partner love about you? What will your person love and admire about you? The Nine of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles is about bliss and abundance and reaping the harvest of what you desire. So this suggests that this is what your partner will love about you. It really reminds me of the first reading that I just did. And I also said that the partner will love your ability to manifest, your ability to find harmony with yourself is what just came through. Your partner will admire your ability to find harmony with yourself and with your life and to feel like you have accomplished a goal. And the most important goal to accomplish is love and unity within self. So I do feel that that is what your partner will admire about you is the harmony, the abundance, the unity of self, the love for self and the feeling of being fulfilled. Everything you want in life comes on the other side of already feeling fulfilled. And in order for you to reach this stage, that's what's going to happen for you. You will feel fulfilled and life will mirror this inner fulfillment with an outer fulfillment as well. And that is what your partner will admire you for. Okay, so I'm gonna use the Love Oracle deck to answer the next question. Is there anything blocking your partner from coming into your life? The sunglasses card. So this really confirms what I just said because I did say that there's either one person or multiple people depending on your situation that you might be connected to from your past and it might be hard for you to move on and they have a bit of your energy because anything you focus your attention on, anything you feel emotionally connected to still has a hold on your energy. And in order to move forward and feel like you have the energy to do that, you have to cut ties with that energy. You have to just completely cut off your focus, your intention, your memories. You know, you will still have memories, obviously, but you they won't consume you is the point. So this sunglasses card says watching, looking, stalking, gaslighting, perception and focusing out. So I do feel this is blocking you from reaching this destination of a soulmate union is by focusing out 
on the past, watching someone from your past, maybe looking at their social media, you know, and tracking their moves and what they might be doing and who they might be with and feeding your energy on this person who you're no longer with and who doesn't deserve you because if they deserved you, you would be together. What can you do to overcome this block? It says, why do I want the relationship I want and I have complete control over my thoughts? This says, think about what you want in a relationship and why you want it. So this was an answer to the question, what can you do to overcome this block? And it is to look at what you want in a relationship and why you want it and to focus on it and even write lists about what you want and what you deserve and what you're worthy of, okay? So this is about focus. This is about calling back your focus from something from the past, focusing your intention on what it is that you want so that you don't just be open to anything, but that you're, again, focusing on what is right for me. What do I want? What am I worthy of? Okay, and that is the fastest way to experience what you want is by actually knowing what you want and setting your focus and your intention upon it. So why do I want the relationship that I want? And this card says, I have complete control over my own thoughts. You can find yourself in an endless loop where you explain that you feel negative because of the negative behavior of someone else. But if instead you take control of your own emotions and you think an improved thought because it feels better to do so, you can turn it around. You have no real control over what anyone else is doing with their vibration or with their actions for that matter, but you have complete control over your own thoughts, vibrations, emotions, and points of attraction. So this is a perfect card because again, if you've resonated up to this point, I was saying that you might have a tendency to focus your energy and your attention on this person from the past that hurt you, that you're not with, that you may still want to be with, and you have given them your power by continually focusing your energy and your attention and your emotions on them. And this is saying you can find yourself in an endless loop if you explain that you feel bad because someone else did something bad to you. So if that makes sense to you, if you resonate and you feel like, oh, I feel hurt because this person hurt me, then you you will be in an endless loop of giving your power away to that person. So it's saying you can't you can't control what other people do or how they behave or what they think, but you can control your vibration. That means you can control what you think about and you can't always control it, you know, but you can redirect it. So when you find yourself going down that path and you feel bad because you you're thinking about something that's making you feel bad, at that moment you recognize that you're doing that, you can shift your perspective and your focus. So that is what you can do to help eliminate this block of focusing out and giving your power away to another. Very wonderful. So what I'm gonna do next is get a reading on what's in store for your love life in the near future. So let's say about three to six months from now, what will be the outcome here in your love life? Okay, so we have the Seven of Swords, which is about deception. This is about winning at all costs hmm let me get another i let me get another card to clarify this one okay so we have the ace of cups and the three of pentacles what i was picking up on is this is energy from your past so I do feel this is what you're moving on from. And you're moving on from someone deceiving you to get what they want from you 
into a partnership where you're working together to reach a common goal. So again, you're moving on from deception, from the energy of someone taking something from you to the energy of working together to achieve a common goal. And that common goal is this Ace of Cups, which is this renewal of all the feelings that you really desire. This is your emotional power, your emotional independence. Okay, so again, you in the next three, six, three to six months are moving on from this energy of deception of someone taking from you into an energy of working together to achieve a common goal, which in this case is emotional union, emotional balance, new beginnings in your emotions is what is in store for you. Okay, a new beginning in your emotions based on the ability to work together to achieve a common goal and setting aside, putting aside, and leaving behind you all deceptive narcissistic energy, okay? All right, so the last question I'm going to ask for you is, when can you expect your new partner to come into your life at the holidays? This is when you can expect a new person to come into your life and to begin a relationship that's based on that three of pentacles and the ace of cups, that new emotional beginning and restoration, those holy emotions of beautiful, harmonious, positive energy in tandem with working together to achieve this goal, this union, okay? So you can expect that around the holidays. Again, based on this condition of you calling back your power, definitely recommend checking out the Spell Jar Ritual and creating one for yourself as well, okay? Beautiful. I'm so grateful. So if you want to claim this message for yourself, go ahead and comment a gift emoji for at the holidays. All right. Again, I just, I'm so grateful to do this reading for you. If you haven't heard about our spiritual inner circle, it's our membership subscription service that allows you to come into our group and to experience more readings on a weekly basis from myself and Psychic Mia. You also get access to additional value like spell jar rituals, live Zoom calls for tarot readings, group chats, education about the energy and what's going on. So if you feel called to join us, you can check out our emails. We send them out and there's one recently about joining the spiritual inner circle. So go ahead and join us there. Also, if you want a personal reading, you can always click the link in the description box to book that for yourself. I'm so grateful again to be able to do this reading for you. I hope it served you. Again, comment a gift emoji to claim this reading for yourself. And I'm sending you so much peace and love. Bye for now. Hi there, card number three. Thank you for joining me for the general pick a card reading this week to find out what you need to know if you are looking for love. This starts with self-love within yourself and mirrored and radiated outwards to magnetize and call in your soulmate union. Okay, so this reading will focus upon being ready and open and willing to receive a love and what you need to know to do to call that in. If you did not join us for our spell jar manifestation ritual, you can see that in the beginning and create a spell jar for calling in love for yourself as well. So go ahead and see the spell jar ritual in the beginning if you want to know how to create one for yourself. The card that you are drawn to is Our Lady of Guadalupe, the Empress of Protection. It says, I am safe and divinely protected. I am held in love at all times. And the crystal that you are drawn to is Lemurian Quartz. So the first card I'm going to draw for you will answer the question, what part of you needs some love now? What part of you is in need of love now? Okay, so the Four of Pentacles is about feeling secure. This is mostly about finances and resources, but because this is a reading focusing upon your love life, this means that 
what part of you needs love is your ability to feel secure and safe and protected in a relationship. And that makes perfect sense because the card that you are drawn to says, I am safe and divinely protection. I am held in love at all times. And this person is holding on tightly to this coin because they are secure in this energy. They are secure, right? So the part of you that needs love now is your ability to feel safe and secure in a relationship, okay? I just want to preface this reading by saying that if at any point you don't resonate with the information I'm sharing, you can always go back to the beginning and choose another card to see if it more accurately reflects your energy, okay? But if you agree with what I'm saying right now that you do feel unsafe in relationships, it's possible that you've done, dealt with some sort of harm or abuse and if that is the case I just want to pour my love and pour my heart out into wrapping you in a bubble of protection a bubble of source light unconditionally loving protective energy okay so if you have ever felt unsafe in a relationship then that may be what you're going through at this time and what you may need is to feel safe okay to feel loved unconditionally to feel like someone has your best interest in mind to know that someone is going to take care of your mind take care of your heart take care of your body and not abuse you not use you or harm you in any way whatsoever okay so again, if you resonate with that, let's continue. And if you don't, you can go choose another card to see if it better represents you. Okay, so how can you move through this energy? How can you allow yourself to feel safe and to feel secure? Okay, how can you feel safe and secure within yourself, within your relationships? How can you appreciate safety and security in your life and your relationships more? How can you have safety and security in your life? Wow. Okay, so another pentacles card. So I feel like this energy mostly reflects your physical body. Okay, so maybe feeling unsafe in your physical body body and this could happen if you've ever been abused in any way whatsoever so how can you appreciate safety and security in the body is by working on it this card is about self-mastery this is the time and the dedication the repetitive energy that it takes to reaching the goal okay so i if the goal is feeling safe and secure in your body then it's going to take time and it's going to take work. And this does make sense if you have experienced some sort of trauma or some sort of hardship related to your physical body, then there might be a trauma that's associated with that. And so what I would recommend, if this is the case for you, is perhaps seeking a professional that can help you work through the trauma. And this could also be about doing self-love affirmations on a daily basis. Anytime you feel fear coming up in your body where it feels like you're contracting your energy, you're closing down, you're feeling maybe a little bit of panic or things like that, then anytime you feel that, it's an opportunity to redirect your energy. I really love journaling. It's something that has helped me tremendously. Whenever I'm feeling afraid, I can write down exactly what is making me feel that way. It could be something really actually happening, or it can just be a feeling or a thought that keeps looping within me so if you if you resonate with this and you are interested in trying that out you can always write down things that are disturbing you and then shift your perspo perspective on what is actually true and the truth is that you are worthy 
You are loved. The creator who made you is love. Your higher self who sees all and knows all and knows what you're experiencing and knows how even the worst things that hurt you can actually make you stronger and more resilient and wiser and more compassionate for yourself and for others as well. That part of you loves you loves you unconditionally so at every moment you are never without true unconditional love so it's always possible no matter how painful the experience you've gone through to shift your perspective into how you've grown or what you can take from the experience and how it can make you a better person and how you are always worthy no matter what you've gone through you're always safe you are always safe at home in your body and that's the root chakra so if you've never done root chakra meditations or exercises i recommend looking into that and seeing how you can open and expand the root chakra which is your energy that's connected to the earth connected to your physical body and it if you are feeling insecure in your body or feeling unsafe on the earth then that is the chakra to work with to help you move through that energy okay so yes this is about work self-mastery through any means that resonate the most with you okay so as you move through this and you want to reach the goal of a soulmate union what will your partner love about you? What will be the qualities in you that your partner most admires? What will your partner love and admire most about you? Queen of Wands. This is beautiful energy. This means that your partner will admire your self-empowerment, which means that you would have had to have moved through this energy of insecurity because the Queen of Wands is not insecure. She knows who she is. She knows what she's worth. She knows what she wants and she allows it and makes it happen so this is an energy of self-empowerment which again means that you would have moved through this self-depreciating energy this energy of insecurity of any trauma you would have moved through it and your partner will admire your tenacity they will admire your resilience they will admire your ability to call in and create the life that you desire and are passionate about based on this sense of inner worthiness and self-empowerment okay so that is very beautiful so the next question i'm going to ask for you i'm going to use the love oracle deck is is there anything blocking your partner from coming into your life is there anything blocking your partner from coming into your life so we have the snake it says competition enemy clever malicious look over your shoulder and the other woman okay so i'm really drawn to this malicious energy please excuse if you hear my bird chirping in the background if the noise is bothering you please forgive me so this snake card says again enemy and malicious so is there anything blocking you? Hmm. I would just feel like it's this focus upon this person who could have been a snake. Because again, if you resonated where I said you may have felt unsafe because of some sort of abuse or trauma that another person inflicted upon you, that would be the snake. And so this fear, this insecurity means that you're still tied to the energy of the snake and feel unsafe because of what they did to you, okay? And it does say they were very clever and that, that there was another woman. So these are energies that they could have had as well where they made you feel like they manipulated your energy and they made you feel like you were wrong when they were the person that was wrong. And they, they could have been going out and being you know, a cheater or backstabber. And this energy might be still infected within you where you feel unsafe because 
you feel like there are unsafe people in the world. And that is that snake energy, okay? So it's possible that that could be blocking you is, again, feeling unsafe because of this person that harmed you. So the next question I'm going to ask for you is what can you do to overcome this block and focusing your energy upon this hurt that this person caused you? What can you do to overcome this block and call in the soulmate love you deserve? This says feeling negative emotions means I'm launching requests. As more people observe hardship and strike a tense, resistant pose and therefore disallow their own well-being, others use them as their reason to do the same. And in a very short time, a very negative pattern of resistance can sweep through your population. The good news in this scenario is that in every moment that every person is feeling negative emotion about the economic state, vibrational requests for more abundance are launched and those requests are heard clearly and responded to immediately by source. So this makes me feel like this snake, this person who abused you, they often say that abusers were once abused. So it's possible that this person that hurt you was also hurt as well. And it perpetuates this cycle of being hurt and hurting, being hurt and hurting. So like I said, it says, as more people observe hardship and strike a tense resistant pose, they disallow their own well-being. And then they use that to do the same with other people. Okay, and a very negative pattern can sweep through. So the way that you do this is by getting on top of those negative emotions and not allowing this pain to perpetuate in a continuous cycle. Okay, so this is again about shifting your emotional energy, which is this self-mastery card where I was su suggesting that if any moment you feel yourself going down the path of those negative feelings and those negative thoughts, instead of wallowing in them and believing that that will always be the case, you can always shift your perspective on the true. Remember that you are loved unconditionally and you are worthy and you have a connection and a love with your higher self that is always going to tell you positive and beautiful things about yourself and help you move through this energy of feeling unsafe and insecure. Okay? Okay. Okay. So as you do this work of personal empowerment, moving out of this snake energy and moving into an energy of knowing who you are and what you're worth and cultivating and practicing that, what is it that's going to be on the other side for you? What is the outcome of your love life as you move through this energy? What is the outcome for your love life as you move through this energy? Okay, this is beautiful. So this Four of Cups represents feeling like life is not giving you what you want. It's about feeling like you don't have what you want and life sucks. <laughs> like this pretty much is a card about life sucks, okay? So that could be what you've been feeling like. This sucks. I'll never get through this. I'll always feel unsafe. Like there's no good people out there in the world. This sucks, right? This is a card about not seeing the abundance that's available for you. So as you move out of this energy of feeling unsafe and insecure and feeling like there's always going to be someone to hurt you or prey upon you. As you work through that energy and cultivate self-love and worthiness and feeling safe and secure in your life, then the Two of Cups is waiting for you, okay? This is about soulmate unions. This is a connection between like-hearted souls that are really 
honestly committed and dedicated to one another. So you're moving from this sucks, there's nothing good for me in the world, to I'm open and receiving love unconditionally. I'm giving love unconditionally. We are dedicated and committed and passionate about one another. And the queen of pentacles, this is beautiful. This means security. The queen of pentacles, you have two queens here. The queen of wands, which is about your fire, your passion, and your empowerment. The queen of pentacles, feeling nurtured, feeling safe, feeling abundant, feeling secure. The queen of pentacles is secure in her body, okay? So you're moving again from feeling down, feeling like life doesn't want you to be happy, there's nothing good for you, to having the soulmate love and union that you desire and to feeling secure, feeling confident, feeling good and full of grace on the earth, okay? So that is beautiful. I'm so happy to see that. That is a good outcome for you. So the next and last question I'm going to ask for you is when can you expect this security in your body and in your life and this soulmate union to come in conditioned upon this work of moving through this unsafe energy? When can you expect this soulmate union to come into your life? through all this work, self-empowerment, self-love, feeling secure and safe. So we have in August, okay? So in August, you could see the stirrings of new beginnings in your love life. Again, conditioned upon doing this inner work of self-mastery and feeling safe and secure in your life, moving on from this abuser and victim paradigm of feeling like there's no safe people out there. I always have to be on guard to knowing and feeling safe and protected and held in love at all times. So in August, you could see the beginnings of a new love blossoming in your life. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me for this spell jar ritual and this reading to clarify, cultivate, call in the best for your love life. All right. If you want to experience more readings on a weekly basis, spell jar rituals to help call in and manifest what it is you desire in your life. Also live Zoom calls between Psychic Mia and myself to do group chats, collective readings, answer questions, anything that you want to know. Then please join our spiritual inner circle if you want to be a part of our VIP membership and get access to more content as well. I'm so grateful again to be able to do this reading for you. If you want to claim this reading for yourself, go ahead and comment a butterfly emoji. Also, go ahead and like this video. Send to a friend who you think may resonate with this energy. Subscribe if you haven't already and continue to join us on a weekly basis as we love to do these readings for you. I'm sending you so much peace and love until the next time. Bye for now. Hi there, card number four. Thank you for joining me for your reading this week to find out what you need to know about your love life. So if you're ready to manifest your soulmate partnership, call in Magnificent Self Love. This reading is for you. If you haven't joined us already for the Spell Jar Ritual, go ahead and go back to the beginning if you're interested in creating one or learning how to do so for calling in and manifesting the self-love and the soulmate partnership that you truly desire. So again, if you missed that, go ahead and go back to the beginning if you are interested. The card that you were drawn to in the beginning is Catherine Labore, the patroness of miraculous healing. This says, as I am ready to heal. I am worthy of the miracles meant for me. And the crystal that you were drawn to is the lapis lazuli. And the first card out in your reading is the moon. This represents what part of you needs love in your life. Is there any part of your life that might be lacking love and how to give it to yourself? So the moon card represents 
all the things that are hidden from view. This represents your divine feminine part of your mind, the subconscious part of your brain that holds memories and holds all the information, whether you see it or realize it or not, it's all there underneath the surface. So again, the moon represents also those secrets that we're not ready to see. So what part of yourself needs love? your subconscious mind, that part of you that stores all the information, all the memories, that part of you needs some love. And it may be that it's time for you to heal from those memories of the past because it does say, I'm ready to heal and I am worthy of the miracles meant for me. The subconscious mind programs literally everything that you experience and it records all the hurts that you've experienced in your life and plants them there beneath the surface. So whether or not we're aware of it, again, the subconscious mind is always reflecting and out picturing those beliefs that we have about ourselves, the wounds that may, we may still be tied to. So what part of yourself needs some love is that part of yourself that has stored all the hurts and stored all the memories and all the experiences that you've gone through. And when you're working with the law of attraction and manifesting, for instance, with our spell jar ritual, it's impossible to manifest anything if you have hidden in your subconscious mind a belief that you're not even aware of. So the, the subconscious part of you has to be as equally available as the conscious part of you. And so this takes a lot of reprogramming of your subconscious mind through affirmations, through meditation, through, you know, anything where you're consistently repeating on a daily basis what you're worthy of. And that's how you experience miracles is, again, by reprogramming your subconscious mind and beginning to plant seeds of affirmation and worthiness so that way you can overcome anything that might be in the past that's continuing to outpicture and reflect itself in your life. So again, this card says I'm ready to heal and I'm worthy of miracles meant for me. So this is about, again, healing your subconscious mind, healing that divine feminine ability to receive miracles in your life based upon the subconscious mind and the conscious mind working together in a way that can move you forward and progress towards the goal that you want to create for yourself in your life. Okay. Okay. So I just want to say that if at any point you don't resonate with the reading, you can always go and choose another card or crystal that may more accurately reflect what you're feeling within. So the next question I'm going to ask for you is how can you appreciate this aspect of you more? How can you love this part of you more? How can you love this part of you that stores everything you've been through beneath the surface? So the nine of wands is about being able to move beyond your boundaries. This card suggests that sometimes it can be, you know, you feel like you don't have enough energy to continue to move forward. You don't have enough energy you know, power to continue on to reach the goal. Like if you're in the last mile of a marathon, summoning all that energy and courage that you need and determination to reach that final goal. Okay, so this is about having determination to reach your goal. And we have the Ace of Wands, which is about new beginnings, new passion, new inspiration. Okay, and the King of Pentacles. So, hmm. How can you appreciate your subconscious mind? How can you appreciate what's hidden beneath the surface? You can summon the passion and the determination to move forward despite any painful experiences, despite even not knowing why you have a lack of determination. Okay, you can summon the inspiration and the courage and the determination to move forward by knowing what you want, by knowing what you're worthy of, by feeling secure within yourself, within your body. 
Yes, feeling secure within your body. This reminds me of what I was just saying about practicing affirmations on a daily basis of what you are worthy of and also calling up anytime you feel fear, anytime you feel insecurity, calling it up and trying to be as specific as possible about what you're feeling and why you're feeling it, writing down and then reflecting on what's true for you and what it is that you desire to create in your life so that you can experience healing and miracles, okay? So yes, how can you love and appreciate this part of you that is feminine and receptive and holds your inner secrets and your inner desires. You can have summon the passion, the power, the willpower, the determination to move forward and to manifest and to call in and to create the life that you desire. Okay, beautiful. So the next question I'm going to ask for you is what will your partner love about you? As you heal that subconscious energy that might be holding on to pains or insecurities or fears, and as you move into the miraculous, as you know what you want and you're determined to create it and to call it in and to continue to do the affirmation work, as you do this, what is your partner going to love and admire most about you? What will your partner love and admire most about you? The seven of pentacles. Your, your partner will admire your patience and your resilience. This card is all about pausing to reflect upon the work that you've done and having gratitude for what is to come. So yes, your partner will really admire your fortitude, admire your patience, admire your ability to reflect on yourself, to reflect on your life and to have gratitude. Okay, that is what your partner is going to admire most about you, your gratitude, your patience, your fortitude. So next I'm going to ask, is there anything blocking your partner from coming into your life now? I'm going to use the Love Oracle deck for this question. Is there anything blocking your partner from coming into your life now? We have the dragonfly clock and abundance. Okay. So this abundance card says, keep a positive mindset, manifest exactly what you want, gratitude and bliss. So this reflects what I was just saying about needing to have an abundance mindset based on the reprogramming of your subconscious mind because it's impossible to manifest anything if you have traumas or fears or triggers still stuck and you'll know it because when you go to write i am affirmations if in your gut you start to feel like you'll feel like i don't believe that you'll know when you're trying to manifest if you don't believe what you're suggesting and that's your subconscious mind bringing up like a, a feeling within you that says i don't believe that i don't believe that to be true so that's the work to be done anytime you're trying to manifest and you call in a, a trigger that says i don't believe that that's the trigger to work on and you can reflect on that. Why don't I believe this to be true? What happened in my life that made me feel like I can't believe that to be true and continue to work on that on a daily basis to move through that? That's gonna help you manifest exactly what you want. So yes, definitely feel like there's some, some subconscious energy there that might be preventing an abundance mindset that will allow you to heal and create miracles. Miracles is just another word for manifestation right creating something out of nothing creating something that was not there and making it real real a reality for yourself so yes having this abundance mindset this clock card says needs time takes time cycles time to heal and progress okay 
So yes, this is the energy of repetitive activity of affirming what it is that you want and being ready to heal. This says time to heal and I'm ready to heal. So again, this is an energy about healing, um, especially secret triggers that might be underneath the surface that only come up every once in a while um, when they're triggered. So yes, what could be blocking you from calling in your partner is you know, delaying the healing process and not having a creative and positive and abundance mindset. This dragonfly card says, wow, it says also heal, adapt, change, and heal. Things coming to light. Wow, yes. So that reminds me of this moon card. Things coming to the light, things coming from up beneath the surface. So reflecting on what it is you want, practicing your I am affirmations. And when any triggers come up that say, okay, I don't believe that working through them, through having an abundance mindset, a sense of self-worth and working on those triggers to continue to change and to heal. Yes. So is there any part that's blocking you from experiencing love? It might be not working with this energy that needs to heal and is ready to heal. Okay. So you can manifest exactly what you want in order to manifest what you want in order to experience these miracles. You have to heal from anything that might, you might not even be aware of what it is that you have to heal from. And that's the work of this moon card is being willing to bring things up from beneath the surface and work through them and move through them as they come to light, right? Be lighthearted about finding out things coming to light. Okay beautiful. The next question I'm going to ask for you is what can you do to overcome this block? Being ready to heal and being ready to cultivate miracles through abundance consciousness. What can you do to overcome this block of healing any subconscious triggers, anything beneath the surface that needs to come up? What can you do? Ooh, the devil. The devil means that you're going to be willing to look this energy in the face and move through it. The devil card is about having like this addictive energy towards negativity. And so this means that, you know, if you have thoughts that need to be worked through so that you can move away from the negativity and move towards the positive, what is actually true for you, then you will be ready and willing to heal. I feel like there's a part of you that wants to heal, but may still be stuck because again, this is about stuff under the surface. So in order to heal, you have to actually bring it up. You have to look at what it is that you may have repressed or hidden underneath in your subconscious that is preventing you from miracles, is preventing you from manifesting your true soulmate. So there is some energy perhaps in your subconscious mind that needs to heal and it these thoughts need to be brought out to the open because remember darkness is usually you know evil quote unquote evil is perpetuated under the cover of darkness in the night so this is about bringing up to the surface anything that is down there that wants to come up that needs to be healed that way you can actually manifest what you desire because again if you try to practice i am affirmations and you feel like i don't believe that's true that is the energy that needs to be moved through that's blocking you from moving forward into your miracle into your manifestation of what you desire so yeah, what can you do to overcome this block is look your fear in the face and be willing to overcome any thoughts or any feelings that are preventing you from miraculous opportunities in your life, from manifesting. Be lighthearted about things coming to light. A lot of people are afraid to look at their demons because they, they just want to push it away. That's why it's repressed emotion and repressed energy can often come up in the terms of disease, you know, disease in our mind, in our heart, and our physical body, because it's been repressed so long that it has to come out. So now it starts to form in our body. So 
either way, this energy wants to come out and it will show you something's wrong. Like for instance, if you always say, oh, so-and-so is a pain in my neck, so-and-so is a pain in my neck. And before long, you actually have a pain in your neck, you know, so the body will outpicture the subconscious beliefs. And that's because people continue to repress their emotions and repress their energy so much to the point where the body has to exhibit that, that energy. So again, in order to overcome whatever it is that's beneath the surface that may be preventing you from healing and growth is to be lighthearted about whatever this is that needs to come up and be willing to look your fear in the face, be willing to look your darkness in the face and move through it. And the way you do that is by knowing and having a foundation of unconditional love, knowing that the creator loves you, the universe loves you, your higher self loves you and supports you and will help you move through this. And you're always safe at every moment of this work. You're always safe. So yes, be lighthearted about looking your fears in the face and that's gonna help you overcome any subconscious blocks so you can actually call in and cultivate manifest what it is that you desire in your life okay so as you do this work as you heal as you look your fear in the face you heal any subconscious blocks what's going to be the outcome on the other side of this for your love life what is the outcome for your love life as you do this work for yourself Okay, so we have the Ten of Wands, which is about carrying burdens. So I think this is what you're moving on from, is carrying this burden, carrying this heavy load of past pain, past trauma, or beliefs that aren't serving you. And what are you moving towards? What is the outcome? Moving beyond the burdens and carrying a heavy load, putting down the baggage. What is the outcome for your love life as you put down this baggage? What is the outcome for your love life as you put down this baggage? The Six of Swords is a perfect card. You're moving on from this pain of the past to a brighter day towards a brighter horizon. This is a transition, okay? So again, as you do this work, as you heal the subconscious energy, any darkness or any insecurities or fears that lurking beneath the surface and you heal this and you move forward, then you're going to put down that baggage. You're going to put down that pain of the past and you're going to move towards a brighter day and a brighter horizon. You're going to transition into the next journey, the next phase of your life as you do this work. Okay. Okay. So if you desire to call in a soulmate and manifest a true soulmate partnership and loving union on the other side of this journey, when can you expect that to happen for you? As you do this work, you transition Okay, so we have a few weeks, okay? So you may begin to see the stirrings of new love in your life within a few weeks as you decide that you're gonna heal any subconscious energy and you're going to expect and call in and be worthy of miracles in your life. That could happen for you within a few weeks. And I just wanted to say that this card came out in the first reading for card number one. So there may be something in that reading that may serve you as well, because again, this card came out then. Okay, I believe it's card number one. Forgive me if I am mistaken. So beautiful. I'm so grateful to be able to do this reading for you. Again, please join us for the Spell Jar Ritual if you didn't in the beginning. If you want to craft a beautiful ritual for calling in self-love and manifesting your soulmate. If you want to claim this message for yourself, go ahead and comment a moon emoji down below. Again, comment a moon emoji if you want to claim this message for yourself. And I also just wanted to say that if you're not a part of the spiritual inner circle, you can join us in our membership that will allow you to experience 
experience these readings more frequently. We have at least three readings between me and Psychic Mia a week. We also have additional offerings like spell jar rituals and also we're going to be doing live Zoom calls as well, doing collective readings, meditations, talking about the energy of the day and also doing question and answers. So please join us. We'd love to have you there as a part of the VIP community. Go ahead and like this video, subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss all the fabulous readings that we do for you. And until the next one, I'm sending you so much peace and love. Bye for now.